Hunter, Sean. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have to say the trailer does not do justice for the film. The story, the surprise um, was unbelievable. As a writer, how did you come up with this, this twist? Um, the ending, the, uh, it's, it's kind of a story that's, that, that consciously builds its way up to that moment um, mm -hmm. where everything in the story kind of um, comes to a, a pinnacle at that, uh, at, at the ending, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was a horror movie and I, I wanted to horrify as as much as I could it's it's very much in line with a lot of the themes that are running through the story throughout or throughout the story but um yeah it was inspired by by you know movies like The Vanishing or Audition which are you know just movies with a deliberate pace that suddenly take a turn like fall off of a cliff in the last five or ten minutes mm -hmm. Uh, go figure because I'm a hiker. I love going hiking and I'm doing like these 10 hour hikes to all day and go wow. figure that you would be out there in the wilderness where you would think you're a little more on the safe side versus to the city where all sorts of people but you know it's cannot it can backfire it's not always safe. It's an eye opener too. No when you're when you're deep in the woods you're just another animal in there. You the laws change. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely in another territory. And it's funny because in the film, it kind of covers that, like that division that, you know, oh, it's this restriction there, you know, we can't, we're not part of, you know, part of the, I guess, the law enforcement in that area, which is kind of like, wow, so can't help? Yeah, it gets to be a gray area where it's, you know, it, it, there aren't, that's they couldn't there were no rules to consult um in the in the film when things get to a point where they need some form of 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 help from the outside world um and there really isn't kind of modern laws in place dictating what goes on or or what to do with people who live that far out from from regular society the whole time I was watching, I was like, wow, people really probably do live out there in the middle of nowhere, um, just living, like going out there to hunt, to be able to put food on the table. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, there are. It's, I guess, one of the points of the movie is that that is, is, is anybody who is doing that right now is probably having a hard time, financially speaking. Um, just because we were a, a culture that has moved past uh, furs and moved past kind of that form of 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 killing animals, I guess, or um, you know, it's just not a sustainable way to live. Um, and there are people who do it. I, I in the the writing of the script, I consulted a lot of trappers uh, who have just trapping shacks and will take you know, trips out for two weeks to go and, and live in the middle of nowhere and, and just trap. But not a lot of those are, are not a lot of the reasons are, are financial ones. Um, it's just to, to get back into that connection with nature and to keep their traditions alive. And, you know, the movie is, is, is kind of poses that question of what if somebody's still trying to make an actual living and to support their family in this, um, way of life that's becoming increasingly outmoded. And then the story, it also covers um, the child, you know, being in that upbringing and is that the right way to raise a child? That it raises the question. Yeah, and it's, it gets the two different opinions from the two people who are, are raising them. One is, is very much intent on, on handing down the traditions and, and the tools and the abilities that, that he had handed down to him and, and um, the other half of the, of the parental unit is kind of coming to grips with the fact that um, this is kind of an obsolete way of life. So there is that, that pull that, um, that both are exerting on 
this child as she's growing up like from um you know presumably from being a, a very very young or even a baby of, of of being raised there without any form of of association with with you know society at all and what kind of person that would produce or didn't and i mean didn't even know what an idea is yeah it's it's not something you know that's that seems like something or at least to a young person uh the idea of of walking around with identification you know you know identifying things have a have a different uh have a different light when you're in the middle of of nowhere where you know um in a primordial world where names don't really make a difference um than walking around with with your name on a card specifically for that reason is maybe equally as as baffling to somebody who's not used to it she is kind of like an alien when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, social norms and things like that that she's not accustomed to okay. and not old enough to have learned that that's at least what goes on out there like like the adults do right um so let, let's talk a little bit about the camera work i noticed that you had a lot of focusing and the character's face what made you uh go that route um a lot of the movie takes place there's there's not a ton of of dialogue in the movie there's um there's a lot of alone time and there's a lot of like the the lead characters are like Devin's character for instance Merceau is a very strong and silent character and never really says more than he absolutely has to to get a um to 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 achieve his objective so there's a lot of silence that goes on and and that that avenue for communication was cut off um <clears throat> so we had to exploit other forms of conveying emotion and things like that and and to somebody who who's very stone-faced and who doesn't betray a lot of emotion again like like the Merceau character um then it's it's the subtleties that make a difference and that's why it it helps to get right in there close with the with the the characters just to to see the more subtle changes that are going on that 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 populate the movie and where was the film um filming take place it was filmed in uh, in and around Man or around manitoba um a lot of it was was filmed on the the border of of manitoba and ontario um yeah very far removed uh just like the story from any kind of civilization or running water or electricity so it was like a it was like a big camping trip that we made a movie uh during so the cabin where the filming took place uh did you how did you find it and i mean it was so simple like simple and we're talking you know very basic style of living to mention the bowl that that you have the character eating from yeah the the uh the cabin was it's was is found in a provincial park called birds hill park that's that's in manitoba here and it's a heritage building which means it's you know it's over 100 years old um and is not is 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 not in you in any practical use um and we were lucky enough to have them allow us to 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 use that so it's an existing cabin that had existed you know at the time where you know it was also removed from civilization and people lived there so um the utility behind building that place you know lent itself exactly to what what we were looking for and i mean like i said you had a you had a great storyline the twist the ending uh, if you would have had the bigger budget, where do you think you would have emphasized a little more? Shooting days, time. Um, when you're doing a low budget movie, uh, and if you're doing it right, like you're being ambitious and you're kind of trying to punch above your weight, um, it allows for very little room for error or circumstance. So when big emergencies come up, you don't have the kind of money to to deal with that, and 
um, and that eventually has an effect on how much time you have to film the movie. And then you're, you're, you know, one of the things you're always trying to avoid when you're making um, low budget films is having to be rushed, being put in a position where you are um, racing through things. And we were fortunate enough that we didn't have that, um, have a lot of those instances, um, especially considering the amount of, of potential catastrophes that, that we had avoided. But yeah, it, it, low budget films give very little room for error and time frees up a lot of room for error. So I think I would have, I would have probably allotted it to time. It certainly wouldn't have been for cast or crew because they were both absolutely brilliant and I couldn't have hoped for a, a better group of people. Yes, I was going to ask you about the cast. Um, how, you, how did you know that Camille was the one to play Anne's character? Because she's, she's made of iron underneath. She's totally, she is rock solid and, and you know, she, she has the capacity to have a vulnerability but also her natural person is somebody who's very, um, like I said, she's a gamer. Um, and there's a way to, she has an enthusiasm about doing stuff and like not, you know, jumping both feet into, into it. And with a, just a very slight orientation, um, reorientation, that kind of, um, uh, that kind of enthusiasm, um, acquires a more practical um, shade to it. And she becomes, she's able to become that kind of person who's willing to put her head down and carry on despite the, you know, grueling conditions, which she had to do in front of um, uh, the camera and, you know, the circumstances that, that we had to go through uh, filming it. So, yeah, Camille, from the moment that I met her, was never in any any doubt that she could do it. She had, she exuded um, a, a, a sense of practicality. Her transition in the film leaves you without words. Um, yeah, and by the end, yeah, you know, like it's really hard to talk about what goes on in the movie and and where she's absolutely brilliant in. But yeah, she has to go through. The movie starts grim and it gets worse and then it falls off a cliff. So she's, she has that sense of, of, she conveys that sense of resiliency and of being accustomed to that hardship um, very well. And, and, you know, I couldn't have asked for a better, a better lead. I'm sure the direction you gave also helped, you know, bring that you know, up. That stuff was just a lot of fun. She works the way that I love working, which is just, you know, she wants to talk about the psychology of, of if, if there's something that she's bumping up against, we'll, we would sit down and, you know, I could offer her the reasons why I had done what I had done in, in creating that moment. And, and she would give her part and, and slowly it would just synergize into, into something that we could both get behind. And, you know, it was her process that really, you know, I, I love adapting myself to um, how actors work. And Camille was one of those things where I didn't even really have to uh, change how I work as a, as a baseline. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak about Hunter Hunter. Like I said, I feel like the trailer doesn't do his justice for the storyline and the ending and like the cliffhanger pretty much. Um, I really enjoy it. That's one of the reasons why I love covering indies. I feel like they have better content. And a lot of times you you don't need those explosions and explosions and green screens. It's it's the organic stuff that bring the light. For sure. Well I'm super glad that you liked it. And uh thank you so much for having me on. It was great to talk to you. Of course. Thank you so much and thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.